and River Isiko, those are the major ones. Then we have River Ikuyua and Shitia River, which is the minor river. And then we have over 84 streams, permanent streams in the forest. And all water that uh, comes from the forest, it goes down to Lake Victoria, uh, whereby Lake Victoria it gets in the water from this particular place also. Although in Kenya we have other places like Mara River, Nyando River and all that. Eh? So, uh, the rainforest when we come to biodiversity, we have over 1,000 species of plants. And in this, 80% they are highly medicinal plants. Okay, 80%. They are highly medicinal plants. And then we have 360 species of birds. And uh, in this, we have 25 that are locally endemic. So these birds in the whole country that are found here, and why are they here? It is because of different canopy layers that Kakamega Forest has that other forests in the country they don't have. And then we have what we call migrant birds. We have some birds coming from Poland, Netherlands, uh, Germany, Austria, Scotland, England. They come here during winter season in Europe and then they will stay here until summertime, then they fly back, okay? So they don't breed here, but they just come here because of climatic condition. Then we have those uh, African migrants. We have some birds coming from South Africa to this place. Most of these, they are cuckoos. If you have heard some birds calling... <laughs> that is one of the African cuckoo. You'll find it in Uganda, in, uh, but originally it, uh, it goes to uh, South Africa, then it comes back here. We have quite many that are in the African migrants. Eh? And then, uh, when we come to primates, we have seven species of primates. Although we have one, which is nocturnal, we call it Perotictica spoto. Perotictica spoto, it used to be found in Kenya, in Kakamega Forest and Mau Forest. But because Mao was destroyed, actually this animal, it, uh, it's very rare, I think. Even if you can find it there, it's very, very rare. But in Kakamega Forest, it's still very common in the whole forest. But it is nocturnal. When we want to see it, we normally conduct night walk. Although right now, they have uh, stopped night walks. Eh? So because they are night <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then, uh, we have... 510 species of butterflies. Oh. So you will find that in Kakamega Forest, um, it hosts over a half of Kenyan butterfly. In the whole country, we have 875 species of butterflies. But only Kakamega Forest, we have 510 species of butterflies. That means that if this forest will be destroyed, Kenya as a country will be losing a lot of species of butterflies. So that is why it's given high priority in protection and conservation. And then uh, I think some of you will be shocked and some will. <laughs> we have 33 species of snakes in the forest. <laughs> that is exactly what I said. <laughs> and uh, snakes actually, snakes in their natural habitat, they are very calm and they are very rare. Why? When you are walking a snake it can feel it's not good to see with the eyes but it's very much sensitive with vibration since the whole body is lying on the floor it can really determine when you are like uh, 100 meters away mm -hmm. so you'll find it will feel that there's something coming then eventually uh, it uh, it goes aside or it runs away whether it's poisonous or harmless but we have all this like uh, we have cold cobra cold cobra i think that one you will uh, in the whole country, you'll find it only in the Kakamega Forest. And uh, we have the Carbon Viper. Carbon Viper, recently, I heard it has been uh, identified in the part of the coastal uh, of Tanzania, uh, close to where Shimoni and the Tanzania, where the importer. I heard that it was recorded there, but uh, it used to be found only here. And then we have other snake, like uh, the one that found here, and it doesn't found uh, anywhere else. We call it planting tree snake. Initially, when we were young, they were telling us that the flying snake, eh? mm. if it's there, it can jump from that tree to another tree. You can just see it in the air <laughs> moving and then to another tree. But all these snakes, they are very friendly and also they are very good in our uh, ecological. Uh, it plays a very uh, a big role on ecological of the forest. 
Um, we have 240 species of bees, you know, like many people in the country, uh, they see the stinging bee, and then they think maybe there is only one, sting, uh, one species of bee, but we have 240 species of bees, of which one stings and produces honey, and then we have uh, the colony bees, the, bee, uh, the species that produce honey, we have about 29 species, eh? and this 29, one is stinging, the rest are stingless, but also they produce honey. So this is what we wanted to uh, create awareness to the community because these are the bees that you can even keep in your house or in your veranda. They'll give you very high quality honey. They don't harm anyone and you can harvest honey without any problem. But the stinging bees, those ones, you need to put them quite away because if you come there uh, applying yourself some lotions that uh, are attractive, they will... Uh, they will the whole uh, bee colony will come for you because of the uh, whatever lotion or wherever you have applied. Eh? So then the remaining the carpenter bees, when we'll be going to the forest, we'll be able to see this kind of uh, this uh, uh, this uh, habitats of the uh, the bees. So I think you are here to explore and to learn to see regeneration of the forest. Now I'll ask if there is any question we can you can ask, My and, then from, and then from there we'll. Primates. Primates. Oh, primates. Oh, primates, we have uh, seven species of primates. We have blue monkey, black and white colobus, red-tailed monkey. Those are the common ones maybe as we'll be walking around here. I think even some of you have seen one species here, which is the blue monkey. And then we have uh, Perotitica spot, that one I told you, it is uh, nocturnal. We have the brother's monkey. The brother's monkey, uh, right now I've heard that uh, some of them have been uh, identified in the airport Eldoret. But also, it used to be found in Kakamega and Sayuaswam. It's a very rare primate, and it's found in the northern section of the, this forest, known as uh, Kisere Fragment of this forest. And then we have Oli Baboons. Uh, we have Vavet Monkey in the forest also, but Vavet Monkey, they are very rare also in the forest. So as we'll be moving around, we'll be able to see those ones uh, in the forest. Pangolin. Yeah, most of Kakamega forest mammals they are nocturnal, as I said. We have three pangolins, we have flying squirrels, we have a um, light spotted ginnet, we do have uh, the Cape Clawless Order, we have uh, black packed shackle, giant forest hawks, push peaks, uh, hares, these wild rapids, we have them here. Uh, we have also the um, the palm civets, they are present. Dictics, also, they are present in the forest. Porcupines, you'll find them in the forest. African hedgehogs, also, you'll find them in the forest. We don't have large game like elephants. Okay, we used to have elephant in the forest. Even we used to have buffalo. But the last time elephant was in the forest was 1912. And then they migrated to the north, to Mount Elgon. Mm -hmm. And the buffaloes, they could not survive. As we'll be going in the forest, you'll see the forest is very thick. Because of the horns, they cannot maneuver in the forest. So that is why some people started hunting them, killing them easily, and that is why they are no longer found in the forest. When was Queen Elizabeth in this forest? Queen Elizabeth, yeah. Visited the forest, that was which year? In early 1930s. In early 1930s. There is a tree she visited. Eh? She done with eh? permission this office? Um, yeah, she visited here. Uh, okay, this office was established by the British government, okay? by that time. That was 19, like you can see that one was constructed in 1931. But officially the casetment of the forest was 1933. Okay? Yeah. So when we'll be going in the forest, okay, anyway, we have some challenges also. That is why we are putting electric fence. Eh? Like, and also community are helping, you know. Uh, we are using the Forest Act 2016, whereby we have what we call participatory forest management. So we have Community Forest Association and the KFS that are conserving this forest. So that is why we have user rights and also we have rangers. Uh, inside of community we have scouts who are also helping to, uh, to protect the forest plus the rangers. And also we have community, those people who have like born with the mind of conservation. Also elders, they are using forest for uh, cultural activities like uh, shrines, praying, attracting rain, even if it has gone beyond the time they expect it. So we have those things. So they cannot allow other people to go to destroy where they normally 
carry out the activities. So they use all means. Like uh, elders, they use taboos. And some of them, they're still happening. Eh? They're still happening. For example, we have this bird. I think well, those people who are from this region, Kunandeka eh? anatebeanga kwa nini ata anakuwa kwa nini anatebea kifanya hivi mkia. Waze wangetu wambia, ukiuwe hiyo ndeke, nyumba enu itachomeka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you see that? Those are taboos that local elders were using to protect. If you cut this tree, your mother will die. Sasa ni nani atataka kuangusha muti mamake akufe? So such a things they are... Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, maybe it will be good we go at least because there is a lot of information that I think it will be more important so that you can even see some of the behaviors of some trees in the forest. Okay.